Hello, I'm going to be talking about my experience I've had with my microphone and with other microphones similar to this. I am using the Blue Yeti currently. This is going to be a review on it, but I'm also going to touch on other microphones a little bit. I mean, I feel like it'd probably benefit the review if I make some comparisons. So I want to go ahead and start out and say that whenever I first got this, I did not use it consistently. Uh, now it's my daily driver. I mean, I use it all the time. Everything I do is with the mic. Whenever I had it starting out, I'd only use it every once in a while because I didn't like how it sounded. Now, that may be sounding strange. You know, you just drop, uh, I don't know, if you get it on sale, maybe you get it for like $80. You drop $100, $120 on a mic. It, it's a decent amount, uh, especially if you had something that you're already happy with. Like me, I had a $40 headset and I continued to use it after I got my mic for a decent amount. And I ended up tinkering with the settings more and more and eventually got it to where I wanted it to be. And that is the biggest thing. These microphones are not really plug and play. You aren't gonna get the like out of the box sound that you want because there's so many different settings on it and so many different ways that you can use it that you really have to adjust it depending on your needs, okay? So before I went with this, I tried a few different blue snowballs and I thought they sounded bad and took them all back. And I kept trying because I know that people know how to make them sound okay, uh, like much better than what I was having. And um, I don't think there were any issues with the products. There could have been, but I'm assuming I just didn't know the settings, kind of like what happened with this. Um, what I was saying is before I was with um, the Yeti, before I was using it, I was using a Turtle Beach headset, okay? So you have a little mic that goes right in front of your face. It's pretty good at picking up just you. Background noise isn't too crazy or anything like that. And it's not very crisp, but it gets the job done. It's okay. Yeti, on the other hand, picks up pretty much everything really well, <laughs> which is good and it's bad. So with settings, you can adjust it. Uh, I needed to make my gain lower and have it not quite as sensitive so I could try and get background noise out because I really do not want background noise. I mean, who who does? Why would you want background noise? It just really made it not sound good, and it was picking up a ton of stuff, so I messed with my settings. I have a actually a, a separate thing on just my settings if you want to go look at that. Um, after using the Yeti for, man, I think, I don't know, I, I, easily over a year, maybe two years, maybe even three. I'm not even sure how long I've had it at this point. Um, I think it's awesome. I think it's great. Again, comparing it to the Blue Snowball, I, I didn't really have a, this wouldn't be a fair comparison. So from my own experience of the Blue Snowball, I'd say the Yeti's way better, For but from me looking at people who actually had good experiences with the Blue Snowball, I would still say that the Yeti is better. It is worth the price gap. They, there is a reason why there is a gap. It has a lot more features as well. The volume rocker on it, being able to change the knob, being able to listen to yourself if you want to. I have that disabled personally, but if you want that, that could be fine if you aren't using this on a, on a consistent basis. Like every time you're using your computer, I could totally see you wanting to do that. Like if you just did dubs or like narrations or just, you know, you're in an isolated room and you want to hear it, totally could understand you wanting to do that for me using it every time I use my computer. That's a little annoying hearing myself talk every time I talk. So I don't have that. That's just because I don't need to monitor literally everything I say. Um, I do think the feature is good though. Um, and maybe I'll use it someday. I don't know. Again, it's not, it's not bad that I'm not using the features. It's if anything, that's a bonus that there are features that I don't even need to use that are just there in case I want them. Um, I have used the multiple modes on the microphone. There are like, um, I'm trying to think of what they call them. Uh, you can pick it up from the front, from the front and the back or from all the directions. I think there are actually four channels. I think there's like another one. I'm not sure what it is. Um, anyway, multi-directional, so you can kind of pinpoint how you want it. Again, multiple ways that you can use it. I have messed with that doing the front and back and the all the way around, and that worked fantastic. The only really gripe I have about it is the stock stand, okay? So the normal stand that it comes with, nice little like 
It's like screwed on, it matches the color of it. It looks nice. It really needs some padding or something though. Like I would not use that if you are, n if you're going to be moving anything near the mic, the vibrations are going to get picked up most likely. I'm just going to go ahead and like assume that that's going to happen to you. It definitely happened to me. If you have it on desk and you're walking around the desk, or if you're hitting the desk, most definitely if you're hitting the desk, even if you're moving a mouse or touching a key on a keyboard, it's going to pick it up and it's going to sound distorted and not good, okay? So I really would recommend getting like a, a cheap like $10 or $15 mic stand. That's what I'm using right now. I think it was like $15 on Amazon. It's really, really nice. And that solved the only real complaint that I had with the mic um but most mics are going to be like that the stands aren't going to be great so in terms of um a comparison between other things like if you're trying to decide on a different product that's not going to take any points away if you're trying to decide how much money you want to spend that is going to take some points away I would suggest investing in another stand it can be like another stand that goes on your desk one that picks up less noise um, ideally you'd get a shock mount if you are going to be doing that, but I have just like a, an arm, a, a, a stand with an arm like that you'd use for a microphone <laughs> like I'm using and I just have it screwed in and I can stomp on the ground and you can't really hear it that well. Like, and especially for just normal use, totally does not pick it up at all. No shock mount needed. It's very good at making sure the vibrations don't mess with it. Um, again, if you're putting it on like on something that you're going to be messing with constantly, shock mount probably would be the way to go as well, but it may not be needed because I don't have personal experience with using a stand on top of something that's messing around a lot, like a desk is probably going to be the main example. So if you wanted to try a scissor arm, it very well may work. It may work better or it may just be like, eh, it's okay. I have no idea. I would imagine that it is going to be better than the stock one, though, because, uh, again, the stock one, eh, it's picking up a lot. Maybe if you get some padding that you can set the, the mic stand on top of, maybe that would help. I don't know. I just went ahead and went with the stand, and it has been doing me pretty well. So I, I think that's pretty much the review on the Yeti. I would definitely purchase one again if something were to happen to this because it has been pretty good. I haven't really had any gripes except for me not knowing how to configure it very well. That's really the only thing that I've had any issues with. And hopefully I continue to use this for a long time. Uh, that's me saying hopefully it won't break. I don't think so. I mean, it's pretty sturdy. I've had like paint chip off a little bit on the volume knob, but I, I think I tried... I wasn't just grabbing it with my fingers. I think I tried like moving it with scissors from across the room or something. So yeah, paint chipped off a little bit, but I mean, it's it's pretty sturdy. Oh, also a windscreen or a pop filter. I would recommend that as well. But again, you're going to be doing that for most microphones. There are a little cheap. I have an on stand. Um, I wonder if I can see the windscreen. I can actually give you the... Um, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe the model. It's AS space ASWS 58-B. This fit on my Yeti. I don't know if they've changed it since I've purchased this. I mean, this has copyright from like 2010. Uh, I didn't purchase it then. So maybe it hasn't changed by then. I don't know. I know I saw people selling them marked up quite a bit on Amazon. So I'd shop around a little bit. If you are going to pick up a windscreen over a pop filter, windscreen is just a little foam piece that attaches to it. Pop filter is kind of like a, a little arm and a um, a big like disc that hovers above it. I do like the windscreen more just so I, I don't mess with it. But some people use pop filters to like line up where they want to be positioned. So if you want to try and mess with that, maybe that would be more beneficial for you. Again, I like the windscreen a lot. Yeah, I think that's... That's the gist of it. 